Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 314 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. And I'm going to start this one off by saying uh, my tour is on sale right now. We've got Perth, which happens in January. Then we've got uh, Sydney on sale and Adelaide and maybe Melbourne by now. So go check it out, loosespears.com, get your tickets. Now, I want to get into something that's a little bit serious. I'm fucked. If I'm going to be real with you, I am in a very dire financial situation. I'm fucked. I may lose my home. Uh, the bank uh, wants to take everything from me unless I can come up with a, an amount of money that I am behind. Uh, and the amount of money that I'm behind is, is almost exactly what I spent on surgeries that I needed to stay alive. So uh, I am coming to you with a request and a plea for some help. I am going to do everything that I can to get out of this and to make as much money as, as possible. And I do think that it is possible. I need some help from you. This is not a bit. Uh, I'm in a dire situation. I think you can tell I'm wearing shorts. All right. Things are not looking good. <laughs> uh, but I think I can turn it around. Can you see the shorts on camera? Yeah. You Fuck, I was hoping that we would zoom in a little bit. Maybe, look, for starting now, we've cropped in. You can't see my legs anymore. But... That was a rare glimpse into the dire situation that I'm in. A way you can help me is this. I don't just want your money. I want to give you something for it. On my Patreon, I have added an option to pay for a year up front. You can uh, subscribe for a year. It's actually cheaper than supporting me month to month. Uh, if you do that, I am going to send you uh, a Cyberbully Superstar poster, which I have not sold since 2014 it's going to be signed and you're going to get a t-shirt okay uh i think the cheapest level of support is like uh uh 50 bucks or less um and if you sign up to that one you're going to get a poster and a t-shirt uh and if you sign up to the one after that the one that's a little bit more expensive than that i will give you uh three posters because it doesn't cost me anything extra to send you a couple more posters uh, but you get some more value. I'm going to sign all of them. This is not a bit. I am in a dire situation. Um, and I, uh, I I really do think that I can pull out of this, but I do need your help. If you've ever gotten any value out of this show, if you've ever wanted to, to support me, now is the time. I don't want to have uh, beaten all of these horrible, impossible things that I've overcome only just to, to kind of lose now. I don't have a money problem. I have a time problem. I will be okay in six months, but the bank doesn't want to give me six months. So if uh, if you've ever gotten anything out of the show and you do want to support, uh, you'll get early access to all the episodes. You'll get an extra episode every single week and you get access to the Discord and you get it for an entire year uh, if you if you pay for it now. So it's patreon.com slash Lou Spears. This is not a bit. I am serious. Uh, and I've been fighting for a very, very long time to not have to do this and get to this point. Um, so if you've if you currently support me on Patreon, you can switch to the yearly. I would love for you to do that. You'll save money. It just it's basically just I needed a little advance on uh, on the support you're gonna give me throughout the year anyway. So if I just you signed up for it. Five fucking Keelan just signed up and you know what he's not even getting paid here so <laughs> so uh yeah i it, it, whatever you can do um in regards to the patreon thing that would be amazing um so yeah that's where i'm at patreon.com slash loose beers if you can help i would be beyond grateful because it's it's my house that's at risk and i would hate to have have gone through all of this shit just to lose now um, so yeah, thank you for whatever you can do. Um, the yearly support option is, is really, really, really what I, what I need you to do. If I'm being honest, I, I'm fucked without it. So, uh, if we can get, you know, even a couple hundred people doing that will make the biggest, biggest difference to my life. So if you can help, uh, for the love of God, please do. You'll get a poster out of it that I haven't sold since 2014. I know a lot of you guys are collecting the posters. I'll sign them. God, help. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I would, I would. now that that's done, I need to address some allegations uh, that are level, being leveled against me. Uh, I started doing Real Talk videos, um, <laughs> and I'm getting a lot of comments in the most recent episode that my hair is going grey. All right? <laughs> why, do you, why the fuck do you think it's going gray? All right? Also, it's good to go gray early. I'm a silver fox. 
Okay, I'm I'm a still I'm I'm 29 years old. I'm not balding. I am going gray. Fuck, that's what I get. That's you know you know I read the other day that if you don't go bald, if you don't start to go bald by the time you're 30, you're probably going to keep your hair forever. I turned 30 in January. Dear God, give me a birthday present. I turned 30 in January. <laughs> Patreons.com. I turned 30 in January. <laughs> I haven't lost a single hair follicle. That's amazing. I get to keep all my hair, but you're telling me it's going to be fucking gray before I'm 60? That sucks. <laughs> this is bullshit. You, maybe I should be one of those guys that um, covers up their grays. Mm. You know what it is? I haven't had a haircut for, for longer than, than usual. Do you know why? Uh, <laughs> why is that? Oh, because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm destitute. Mm. Because if I, if I have 30 bucks, it's going to the bank. Um Maybe I'll become one of those guys that dyes their their hair. You know those people, but they but the the shades always off. You know, like the shades always like like they go like for me I go brown, but it would be like really brown. You'd be like Lewis looks weird, but you can't really tell why. And then I go oh, I've 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 dyed my hair, and they go oh wrong color, dude. It looks horrific. So I I uh, I would just like to say that if you don't want me to have gray hair. Patreon.com slash Lou Spears. That's the only way to stop this from, from progressing further up the sides of my head. You know, I got so much worse in the last two years. I wonder how much of that was from lack of sleep uh, or and how much of that was from stress. Probably a, 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 a critical hit combo of the two. You should say when we're, we're having coffee this morning, you, mm. t you were complaining about how grey you looked. Yeah. And you asked... Do I look that grey? Yeah. I looked up and said, "Yeah, that's, yeah." You look exactly the same in real life as you do on camera. Yeah, I, I was, I, I was um, coping. Is what I was doing. I was lying to myself. I thought, "Oh, yeah, it looks really grey in that video, but that's because of the green screen, <laughs> and I had to color grade it a little bit." I don't look that like that in real life. And Keelan looks up and goes, "Nah, you definitely do." <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if, 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 if nothing else, you know, even if I lose the house, your support on Patreon will mean I can cover up my grays. So thank you so much. Give a yearly subscription to someone as a Christmas present. Okay. For? No, no, the not full you amount. do. Yeah, for the full amount. Yeah. That's what I mean. Oh, you're saying other people should. Yes. I don't know if you can do that. But, hey, how about this? No, don't worry about it. Just help. <laughs> Yeah, buy it for your mum, even if she doesn't use it, you know? <laughs> Go for it. Buy two, whatever. Whatever you could, seriously, for real, whatever you can do, it, it'll help. And I'm not going to spend the whole fucking episode begging. We do have a banger episode. I, dude, I am so fucking embarrassed. Not about needing help with my mortgage, all right? I'm not embarrassed by that at all, okay? I went through a lot of hell and I survived up to here. I'm very proud of myself to, to only be struggling this much now. What I am embarrassed about is something just heinous. This is so... Okay, let me just explain it. This is so... Okay. So, you may remember, I think I talked about this on a podcast. It would have been last year when I did shows in... Uh, actually, it would have been even before that when I did shows in Brisbane. Yeah. It must have been 2022 towards the end of the year when I did the Gap Year Tour, right? I don't know if I, I, I feel, I've definitely talked to you about it. I think I've done it on the podcast. I booked a hotel and I showed up at the hotel and I paid for it. And, the, and they said, we have no record of your reservation. And I showed them the email and I said, no, nah, look, I've got it. It's, it's this, I was at the right hotel. I had the receipt. I had spent like $500 on it. Yep. I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be staying. And they looked at the email and they said, we do not recognize this website at all. This, we don't have this. And I was like, well, but I've been charged. And like I Googled it and I've, I've never done this before. I've never gone it wrong. So then they go, what we're going to do is it definitely looks like a real booking. Like they would looked at it and like it definitely looks real, but we don't have any record. Maybe we fucked up. They go into the system. They couldn't find any record of it. They even looked at the particular room that I had booked uh, it was occupied. So then they called head office because it was a chain and uh, they couldn't find any record of it at all. And they came out after about 40 minutes of genuinely trying. They were really lovely about it. They said, sir, we're so sorry. We think you've been scammed. Uh, and I was like, what the fuck? Are you kidding? And uh, then I looked it up and it turns out it was a website that I had never used before. Uh, but it looked really legit. It had a bunch of other things on it. I was like, oh my God, I've been fucking scammed. This is such a good scam. They got me. 
Um, fuck. So I ended up having to pay again to stay in the hotel and they were really nice about it. They were like, look, we can't let you stay for, for free, but they gave me a free upgrade. So I stayed in this baller room for, nice. for much cheaper. Um, then, right, just a couple weeks ago, I get an email from that scam website and they reached out to me again and they said, hello, sir, we're from this hotel that you stayed at. We can see that you have been charged for something that you did not use. So we want to refund you. <laughs> to refund you, we've sent you this form. We need your debit card uh. and the, the number on the back. And I read that and I go, okay, that's a fucking scam because the people who are most likely to fall for scams are most likely to fall for the second follow-up scam as well. So I emailed them back and I said, hello, Rachel, in quotation marks, <laughs> uh, please suck me from the back, oh, no. scammer. <laughs> and I responded and I sent it off. Oh, no. It has been brought to my attention. <laughs> that I was never scammed. They actually just made a clerical error a year ago <laughs> and they just discovered that they owed me $500 and this poor woman <laughs> who works at the, the reception of this hotel that I paid for twice <laughs> tried to give me my money back and I said, suck me from the back, scammer. <laughs> And she sent me a follow-up email and she said, please call the hotel. I called the hotel and I talked to the actual girl that I told to suck me from the back. And I said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I thought you were a scammer. She, was, she wasn't very happy with me, but she was good about it. She said, no, I understand why you would think that I did just ask for your credit card and the numbers on the back. And I got the money back. But it's not enough. Help! <laughs> oh man, it was, that was that's going to be the most embarrassing phone call of my life. <laughs> oh, no. This like twenty-five-year-old girl. Oh, I'm I'm really sorry for. <laughs> I apologize. I'm really sorry for saying suck me from the back, scammer. I thought it was a, an, a, a guy from Bangladesh, not some fucking twenty-five-year-old uni student who works at a hotel part time. Please forgive me. So I won't be staying at that hotel anymore because uh, even though they were very nice to me and gave me my, my money back, I feel like if that girl is working reception, she's going to, she won't clean my toilet or something. And you know what? I'll deserve that. That's a hundred percent on me. So I would just say, learn from my mistake. Um, and if, <laughs> if you think you've been scammed, just be really, really sure about it because you could kind of, technically end up sexually harassing an innocent hotel staff member. Mm. You know, she's really lucky because what I, what I used to do is I would, I would send an attachment with like a horrific, disgusting image of like Goatsy or something to scammers. I used to do that. Goatsy. Have you ever seen that image of that guy sticking his fingers in his ass and pulling it apart for the camera? <laughs> it's foul. Uh, Don't Google it. Okay. Um, kids. Uh, so, so, I would, I, I would like to say that she's lucky that I didn't do that, but really I'm lucky that I didn't do that because that's probably illegal to just do that to some <laughs> some person you don't know. Um, so, yeah, lesson learned, guys. Uh, be polite even to the people who have scammed you. Are you Googling it? What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, pretty good, huh? That's good. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, I have, I have here a, a story that's just been thoroughly amusing me. Do you know the wrestler, uh, Brock Lesnar? He, I think he's now retired. He's, he's like, a mm. uh, professional wrestler and former MMA fighter as well. Like yes. he imagined the biggest scary, like this guy is so big and so scary that you would see him as a character in a video game and go, that's a little bit too much. No human being looks that big and scary. Well, Brock Lesnar has a child, a daughter, okay? And she just absolutely demolished the uh, 
her high school's record in shot put. Mm. And, bro, this girl, look at her, is the what? most jacked high school kid I've ever seen in my fucking life. This is her dad, all right? She, ripped. she looks like she looked, she has the body that I want. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like a, how old is she? She's a high school kid, I believe. Um, Look at her. Look at just the frame oh. on her. She looks so fucking tough and scary. Her mother didn't even try when it came to giving genetics out. She got, she's 95% Brock Lesnar. The only difference between the two of them is age and gender, it seems. <laughs> this girl is going to be in the fucking Olympics for sure. She was the Minnesota shot put champion in 2019. Sometimes you look at someone, you look at a woman and you go, she is built for throwing rocks. Like that's what she's for. She's for chucking stones. You look at her body and you go, that chick can throw a hunk of, of gravel. That's really good. And, uh, a lot of a lot of people are being horrible to her and commenting on her and saying she looks more like Brock than a woman. Well, I, I, to those people, I would say fucking watch out because she may be a child, but if you run into her in the street, she'll fuck you up. She'll pull your head off and throw it like a shot put stone. I love that. How old is she? She is so jacked. What a legend. I need to find out. Okay. As if they don't say how old she is. Okay. Brock Lesnar, daughter, age. I mean, she looks like... Oh, she's 21. Okay. Yeah, so she's still so young. <laughs> I can't get over how fucking jacked she is. Incredible. Uh, not not, not what, uh, what I guess you would uh, hope for if, if, you were, if you were a girl and you looked at mum and dad and you were like, ah, oh, which one do I want to look like? <laughs> Brock Lesnar isn't your first choice. But if it does happen, you know that you're just going to be a Division One athlete in whatever sport you pick. I reckon put her in the WWE. If you can throw a stone, you can throw like a woman off a ladder, <laughs> you know? I'm going to see her versus Rhea Ripley. That would be a fucking matchup. Um, all right. So have you seen – I've been obsessed with this. The, the Tesla Cybertruck has come out. And have you seen it, what it looks like? Yes. I remember when they first showed the images, and I think this is a very like uh, a very non-American thing. I think that when you see trucks in America, you kind of think of like a Ute in Australia, like mm. a Hilux, which is basically if, if for American listeners, it's basically like a, a a a really big sedan. Like that's the size of it, not the shape, but the size. Is like a very big sedan yeah. is our Utes, right? Uh, but. In America, a truck is like, I thought that truck was like a slang term that Americans used until I went to America and I was like, oh no, they literally drive trucks. The size of the cars that you Americans drive is unbelievable. No wonder the traffic is so bad. Everyone's driving a fucking bus sized vehicle. Mm. It's, I can't understand. I don't know why you would want to drive something so big unless you'd go off road fucking all the time. Even then, none of our cars really look like that. And we live in Australia mm. where there's more, much more off road opportunities in much more of the country. Cause most of our country is just an inhospitable desert. <laughs> <laughs> so the Tesla Cybertruck is, it's the size of their trucks. I didn't realize it was that big until I've started seeing pictures of it on the street. Um, and basically, it's come out, and I th I think it's really cool. Do you like it? The uh, yeah, it looks. I uh, I think it looks cool. I think they're really. It's getting a lot of shit. A lot of people are calling it ugly. I think it's one of the coolest cars I've ever seen. Mm. I think it's so sick. I think it's amazing that they're innovating on what a car should look like. Because I think all cars today they look exactly the same. They're all the same. They're all those weird, boring curves. And a lot of that I understand is due to safety regulations, but fuck man, surely someone can come up with an idea for a car that isn't just like a, a boring oval shape. Yeah. They all look the same, except they've got a different badge. You know, even BMWs of uh, like the shape of a BMW, 
a really good two hundred thousand dollar one. It looks the same as like a, a second hand car you can get for seven thousand dollars that was from two thousand nine. They look the same, and they've looked the same for like two decades now. I want to see some fucking corners and interesting curves and silhouettes. Not that I can drive a car, but I would like to see them. And also every car is the same color. They're all silver or gray mm. or sometimes black. That's it. You don't have colors in your cars anymore. Not like the 70s and 80s where everyone had an interesting car with a different shape and a different color. Although everyone in the 80s died in their car accidents. So there is a bit of a trade-off. Remember when I had a purple car? Great, great example. You had a purple car. When's the last time you saw a purple car that wasn't driven by a drug dealer? Okay, I want to see <laughs> a purple car driven by a mum or or driving their mum's car given to them like Keelan was, right? That's what I want to see. <laughs> I want to see that shit, but was, we're not going to. It was the death trap. Yeah, it really was. It was not a safe car. <laughs> um, but the Tesla, right, it's... The construction of it is so interesting. It's stainless steel, a lot of it, right? So it's really fucking heavy and it doesn't flex, right? And uh, it has all of these sharp, like actually sharp corners because the panels, it's not like the panels of a car where you can mold it. With stainless steel, you have to stamp it. Mm. So the only way to make these things, they had to invent new car manufacturing technology and they basically make the car with fucking hammers. They bend the stainless steel much further than it's supposed to go and then it snaps back into the shape that they want it to be. That's how they make this car. And so every, every single Tesla is a little bit different because they can't do exact cutting and bending because they're using fucking hammers. They are industrial grade, super scientifically built hammers, but it's a fucking hammer mm. banging a sheet of metal. It's not gonna be exact, right? So this thing is super, super heavy. It's made out of fucking stainless steel how many people is this car going to fucking annihilate on the road? Because that's the thing about these these newer, really boring cars. All of them, uh, they have crumple zones, right? Mm. Where they're, they're made to smash in a way that absorbs the impact and protects the driver. The Tesla Cybertruck is going to, like the other car is the crumple zone. Right, the person driving the Tesla probably going to be fine. Whoever it hits, or whoever hits them, is completely fucked. It's over. Like that thing. It's like it's like driving a steel brick. It's mm. a brick on wheels that's unbelievably heavy and faster than a Porsche. That's what it is. It's going to annihilate anything that it hits. And a lot of people are saying, oh, it doesn't need a crumple zone because it has all of these other features like automatic braking and the Tesla autopilot and all that other stuff and all those other safety features and all the cameras. And that's true, right? But that only is that only protects the person driving the Tesla, right? And this is what I'm seeing a lot of people talk about saying, the Tesla doesn't need all of these other features and it doesn't need crumple zones and things like that because the Tesla is such a tank that the person inside it is going to be protected. My counter argument to that is, is that going to be how we design cars from now on when it comes to safety is we don't have to have a crumple zone as long as we kill whoever we hit. Like that's the, is that the safety philosophy? Is like, as long as our car kills the other person, if that's what every manufacturer does, all of a sudden we've got a fucking arms race and the safest car on the road will be the one that fires the laser at the other car before they crash and fucking disintegrates them. Oh no, it's totally fine. Like we're going to be, we'll be fine in a car crash because I'm going to, I'm going to kill the mum of four and her whole family because I'm driving a, a I'm driving a fucking meat grinder. <laughs> My car has this special AI auto detecting car grinder on the front of it. So if we get into a small accident, it actually swallows the car and spits out a cube on the back for the paramedics to pick up and <laughs> identify the bodies. It saves the teeth for ID purposes. Is that how we design cars safely now? I don't know. That said, Fuck, it's such a cool looking car. Everyone who says it's ugly, I cannot tell you how much I agree. 
I disagree, sorry. Oh, well, kind of agree. It is an ugly car, but that's what makes it so fucking cool. I love the hard edges of it. I love that it's that it's like just big panels and there's no curves on, on it. I don't know. I just think that it's so unbelievably cool looking. And I think it is going to kill so many people. But it's going to win all of the insurance claims because none of these Tesla drivers will be at fault, except for in the uh, the uh, increasingly common scenario where the autopilot sees like a, a mum crossing the road with a pram and it detects nothing. Go! <laughs> that seems to be happening a little bit. And that, and that when it's driving into direct sunlight, it stops working and can't see. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit sunny today. Perhaps we should accelerate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, man... It, Dude, it looks cool. How's this though? I thought this when I was looking at it, I watched like, it was a 40 minute car review. I watched like five minutes of it. And then I, I just had this thought and I just turned it off. It's stainless steel panels, right? So how fucking hot are they going to get in the sun? Yeah. Aren't uh, they going to get really, really, really hot? Like you could touch, like say it's like in Australia, for example, or in, in Texas or whatever, where in, everyone will be buying it in Texas. All, all Joe Rogan's massive network of podcasters are all going to be riding around in, in uh, cyber trucks crashing in. What happens when two cyber trucks crash into each other? Mutually assured destruction. They both fucking delete from existence, probably. Anyway, I um, feel like... Cyber cars. Yeah, it pro they probably like smash and bounce off each other and <laughs> take out everyone in, in the in the vicinity. They probably do a fifty rolls, uh, driven by the the fucking autopilot into into schools. Um, surely, if it's like thirty five degrees or forty degrees or whatever all day outside, mm. you're gonna burn yourself if you touch it. Yes. Right? How yeah. hot does stainless steel get in the sun? How about this? Make remake the Tesla out of the same material that's uh, on non-stick fry pans, and you have like a portable fry pan. Chuck a few eggs on top, and then if you want your eggs, you just accelerate a little bit. The a, a compartment in the roof opens and it lands in a bowl. You got eggs while you drive. <laughs> that's fucking science. Hire me, Elon. God, he can build a car. He can't fucking run a Twitter. Have you seen him freaking out? Did you see him talking about advertising on Twitter? I think Elon Musk has no idea how the advertising business works. Uh, and I think a big re because you know what else? Tesla has never put money into advertising. Mm. So he's never really engaged in the advertising, traditional advertising world very much, even from like running a business perspective. From what I know, anyway, I might be wrong. But at this conference where he's, he's on stage with this guy doing an interview about Twitter and the guy asks him, about all of the advertisers that have been pulling out. Disney pulled out all the really, really big advertisers that are spending millions of dollars on the platform, helping to keep it afloat, have all pulled out because he tweeted out some stuff that was like arguably almost 99% quite anti-Semitic. Even if that wasn't the intention, it is what was said. Um, or sorry, yeah, quite anti-Semitic, right? <laughs> so all these people pull their ads. And he basically came out and he did this big whole free speech spiel of fuck you. You're all trying to boycott me and censor, censor me. Fuck you. You can't do it. Which is, you know, an admirable thing to say if those advertisers were pulling out for that reason. They're not. That's the reason that they're kind of giving. That's like the straw that broke the camel's back. You know what's really wrong with Twitter's ads? They don't make money. They don't fucking work. The, the platform does not work for advertisers. You put money into it. You can't target certain demographics. You can't get really, really micro down into the, exactly the type of customer that you want. It doesn't work. Mm. Like the advertising that you put on Twitter does not work. And it's also quite likely that when you put an ad on Twitter, you're going to be next to like a footage of children in war and and incredibly racist shit and uh, fight videos and gore and all this other horrific stuff that has gotten so much worse since uh, Twitter became X that all these brands are just going, oh, well, we can actually literally see that the return on our investment is not working even just financially. Even if all of these other issues weren't uh, a thing, even if it was like the 
super popular website, no controversy at all, heavily moderated in a way that brands would like, not that they should do that, uh, they would still leave because they're not making money, right? On Facebook uh, and TikTok and Instagram, you can actually put a dollar in and you can see how much it gets you out. Like that's how good it is. So you can see, oh, when I spend 10 bucks, I made 30 bucks. I'm going to spend a thousand. So I'll make 30,000. You can see that on Twitter. They don't have those tools. It's so blind. You put your money in and you, you don't know what the fuck's happening. You don't know who's seeing it. You don't know how well it is or is not working. It's just a shit platform for ads. And Elon Musk has come out and said, yeah, fuck you. You can't censor me. Which is kind of like kind of like me selling no tickets and being like, oh, they're trying to cancel me. Yeah. No, no, they're not. They're just not buying them. No, oh, the mainstream media is trying to cancel me, I say to an empty audience. <laughs> <laughs> the bank is trying to cancel me because I'm too controversial. No, nah, but no, nah, you haven't paid your mortgage. That's why. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Not a joke. Help. Um Maybe. We'll talk about that later. Right. I'll float oh, no, I'll floating the idea. We might do some kind of live podcast. I'm clutching at straws. There might be a merch drop. I'm gonna figure out a bunch of things. But what I'm focusing right now on is this yearly Patreon thing. That's the way to help me. Um fuck. I can do it. I've I've overcome worse. I got a new head now. Um all right. Taylor Swift is the person of the year. Have you seen this? She's Time Magazine's person of the year. That's really good. She's right up there uh, with other prestigious people such as uh, Adolf Hitler um, and then a few other blokes. <laughs> Elon Musk is there. He's been there. Don't know. I'll tell you. I bet he has. Yeah. All I know, that's pretty funny. All I know is that Taylor Swift uh, and Adolf Hitler have both been Time, Time Magazine's person of the year. I mean, I guess that, I feel like, I guess that makes sense. I mean, that's going to make a lot of Swifties happy, but I feel like they like, there would be probably more uh, important people to put as Time's person of the year. How about this? They, she could be Time's most famous person of the year. We'll do that. But I don't know about like person of the year. I can think of a few other people that might be more deserving of being it. Cause yeah, she's, she's really good at being a pop star. She's she's made a lot of money. She's a she's a billionaire. She can almost dance. Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin. Okay. Joseph Stalin again. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. See, see, this is good. This is good stuff. Maybe Winston this Churchill is, again. Maybe this is foreshadowing. She's gonna be at the at the forefront of a giant world shattering war. She's gonna send hundreds of thousands of teen boys to their death. That is the way that this is going, you know. Taylor Swift is getting every single woman on her side and all of the songs are about how much uh, boys have hurt them. And pretty soon the tide's going to turn. Like, I'd say, I'd say that we're very, very lucky that she's dating Travis Kelsey because that's the only thing keeping the boys alive at this point. Henry Kissinger? Okay. Yeah, see, these are, these are very important... Ronald, Wa Ronald Reagan. Okay, I'm not going to comment on the moral character of these time people of the year, but they are very influential, much more influential than Taylor Swift. This is a really bad sign because I think a lot of these people who were Time Magazine's person of the year, at the time, they were like, yeah, these guys are great. Like the Hitler one's funny because they were like, he's not a bad guy. He's kind of cool. Uh, Osama Bin Laden? He's been Time Magazine's Person of the Year, hasn't he? Was he? No, I'm thinking of the other terrorist. Who's that kid that fucking blew up the the something? Didn't they make him Person of the Year? I feel like a terrorist has definitely been Person of the Year fairly recently. Oh, recently? Um, George Bush. Yeah, him. That's Rudy who I was Giuliani. thinking of. That was the uh, terrorist, George Bush. Uh, no, I swear there was a there was a kid who made a bomb. Vladimir Putin. Okay, this is not good for Taylor Swift, is it? Donald it's not, Trump. Don, okay, not not looking good. Another another billionaire with a very uh, supportive fan base. Um, uh, I swear. Greta Thunberg, I, Thunberg. There we go. Another terrorist. Time magazine <laughs> terrorist. I'm thinking uh, person of the year. Yeah. I, I, maybe I'm thinking of a different magazine. Uh, okay, I... I can't. I won't be able to finish the episode. Time magazine 
person of year terrorist. I swear that. Uh, okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of uh, of of a different magazine. I swear there was that kid terrorist on cover of magazine controversy. I swear. Here we go. Rolling Stone. That's who I was thinking of. The Boston Bomber. Oh. That's what I was thinking of. This one. This bloke. They yes. put him on the cover. Uh, which, you know, is probably uh, just slightly less bad than putting him as the Time Magazine person of the year. All right. Okay. Well, I'm glad we solved that mystery. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, she sells a lot of tickets and she she makes a lot of money and uh, and she gave her truck drivers a nice bonus. I don't get I don't I just don't I don't understand the the Taylor Swift obsession. I you know what I don't get? I understand people liking her. I can't really fathom people getting obsessed over something that is so designed to attract a mainstream audience. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, to me, that's like someone becoming incredibly obsessed with like the sandwich. It's like everyone likes it, but you're not really supposed to love these things. Or, or if you do, you have autism, you know, maybe I'm just jealous because the like only her. people who have, I, I like her. Yeah. She's not, she's, she's the best in the world at what she does. I just find it so interesting that like, like, say, no one cared this much about Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Madonna. It's really interesting to me that that Taylor Swift seems to be, like, the first pop star who's, like, the, the pop star of the time. Mm. Michael Jackson is kind of the only other one. But to Oops. me, Michael Jackson, I wouldn't describe him as a mainstream artist. Like, what he was doing was so fucking unique and different. For its time, and even now, there's been no music or, or no live shows like it. Taylor Swift is, like, phenomenal and amazing in what she does. But what she does is be, like, a, a pop star, like a mainstream artist. She makes a song, you hear it on the radio, it makes you feel good, and it has a snappy chorus. And I, I think... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I what think do you think just... is the... What, what makes... Because what makes her stand out so much that not only that makes you go from, Oh, I quite like her to Holy fuck. I'm so obsessed that I'm going to dance in a movie cinema. I think it's just community building from TikTok because everyone on TikTok is talking about it. So you can feel involved. Same thing with Harry Styles. He wasn't that big until people started posting clips from his concerts. That's And true. then he sold out 120,000 tickets in Melbourne. And I went because I thought it was cool. That's very true. I didn't give a fuck about Harry Styles at all, but for a good three months there, I was going, da, 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 da. I'm so good. Yeah, that's true. But now he's got, he's lost his hair. So, yeah. you know, and there's, I'm done with you. You know that Woody meme? <laughs> dropping the toy. I'm over. I'm too old for you now. There's all that just girl core stuff of your, your laptop's going to die. Oh, good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess, you know what? That is... That is such an interesting thing where like, uh, I, I guess Matt Reif is another example of, of this. Like it's just TikTok where it's almost like in, in, in some way, because uh, I've been doing this since 2012, community has always, always, always been cultivated and built and controlled and owned by the artist. Whereas more recently, like in the last 18 months, community is built by the community and controlled by the community to the point where it's it a lot of the times it's so far out of the artist's control that the community can fucking turn on them and there's nothing you can do about it say like uh i say like five years ago if i really 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 fucked up and all of you guys turned on me i could turn my comment section off mm. for six months and you guys have no voice to talk about how much you dislike me. You could make a Facebook post or you could post on your Instagram, but it's not like going anywhere. Nothing's happening. Now, when an artist fucks up or disappoints uh, or impresses and does something above and beyond, some random teenage girl 
can post a TikTok about it and it can get 300,000 views. Yeah. And then five girls do that. And now it has 1.2 million. Or, uh, I'm so fucking shit at math. What's that? 1.5? 1.5. Million views. Right? It's almost like communities are built and founded and managed and controlled outside of the artist's hands. And the artist can kind of influence it a little bit, but it's completely out of their control. Yeah. And that's, yeah, you're so right. That's what's happened with Taylor Swift. That's what's happened with Harry Styles. Uh, I think she does a really good job at it as well. The, the hype that's created around her uh, potential album release is like, <clears throat> my girlfriend loves this stuff. There'll be She'll post a photo and there'll be three birds in the background and yeah. she, they'll go onto their little chat rooms, I guess, and they'll decide all the three songs of the three songs that she didn't release last time and it's three, mm. so that means it's coming out on the third of this month and the last song was this, so that means 11th of November 2025 is when the next album comes out. Wow. That's, that's See, the kind of conversation. if I posted something cryptic like that, people would, would go, what's that? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's what fascinates me is... Is she hasn't told them to do that? Yeah, and she she didn't in she didn't, uh, to my knowledge, she didn't invent that. Like she didn't post it once and go, "This is a secret thing that you should decode," so that they knew that you would then do that every time she did it. She didn't like invent that and tell them how to do it. They just started doing it. Yeah, uh, without her input at all, and then she is almost following their lead and cultivating the behavior that she wants, which is really, really different to how it has worked for the last few years and how it works for still people who are just starting where you have to build it yourself and maintain the momentum yourself. It's like, if I don't post a video, no one's talking about me really. Mm -hmm. Like no one's, like when I took all that time off when I was sick, I would get a few nice messages from fans who cared and from people who listened to the show, but only I would see that. I feel like if she took some time off, people would be talking. She's taking time off. Where's she going? What's she doing? Like she would almost get bigger. And that's because, yeah, these communities that have been built and founded and created, they don't exist anywhere. It's just in the algorithm of TikTok. I think it's the same reason why this new Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer has become the biggest video ever. Yeah. Because so many times the community have just decided that they think the new trailer is going to be released whenever they've worked it out and mm. it never does. Yeah. And now it's actually real. Yeah. Because for years yeah. and you and I have talked about this as long as I've known you, it's like the new it's all the leaks look like it's going to be released next month. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this time it actually was released and it w was actually released right after it was leaked. Yeah. So this is the one mythical, it's like the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. Like the prophecy says when these criteria are fulfilled and it seems like that criteria has been fulfilled 10 times in a row, but Jesus never showed up. Uh -huh. But this time Jesus showed up and he's fucking walking on water and there are too many black people in the trailer. <laughs> According to other people, not me. Um, speaking of, I wanted to say such a big thank you to everyone who is sharing the real talks that I've been doing. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, uh, unless you support me on Patreon, cause you get it early help. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, uh, I will have released like four or five of them, a uh, four of them, I think. Uh, and, uh, but when we're recording this, I've only done two. They've both hit over a hundred thousand, which is fucking crazy because when I was doing it three years ago, I think 40,000 was like very good yeah. for me. And I was, I was really stoked with that. This time I was, I was thinking, oh yeah, 20 to 30,000 will be great for me to start up with and start building with. They've both hit a hundred. I can't fucking believe it. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. And you know what it is? It's because people are sharing it in their group chats and putting it on their story. I can literally see the, an the analytics are so much better than they used to be. I can see how many shares it gets. And when it's sitting on like, you know, 10 shares or whatever, it's going okay. And then all of a sudden it, it gets 50 shares and the views like fucking spike and then Instagram puts it everywhere. So uh, if you, you know, want the fucking, if you enjoy the real talks and you want things to go well for me and everything, you want to help out, chucking it on the story or, or even just sending it to one person is a really good signal to Instagram that people like this video. We're going to put it in more feeds as people scroll through the reels tab, which I can't remember. Did 
the Reels tab exist when I was making Real Talk? Yeah. Uh, no. Yes, it did. Because Reels came out in 2020 during lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Because when I was making them, I was limited to 30 seconds max, which if you go and watch the old ones from three years ago, I am talking so fast and a lot of them have giant... If you watch and you try and pay attention for it, you notice that I've just chucked, edited out like a good joke yes. to keep it under 30 seconds, which we did all the time. Oh, we love this joke, but we have to remove like the middle of the video because we need an intro and an outro. So you get, hello, one joke, bye. <laughs> now, the first one I did was like 45 seconds. The second one I did was a minute 30. I'm going to keep them under 60 seconds if I can. But if they have to be longer, they can. And uh, it's uh, I'm enjoying making them. It's great. So thank you to everyone who's like putting them on their stories and, and, and supporting me. This has been like, um, obviously, you guys know it's been like such a fucking tough time for me. But I feel like finally I'm well and I can create and enjoy it and do it properly. And, and it's working. And that's why I'm like, fuck, this thing's so frustrating because I don't have a money problem. I have a time problem. It's like, fuck, if I could just skip forward, you know, in six months times, all these problems that I have and all these worries that I have around money will be gone because I will have been doing shows and videos and all this kind of stuff. It's like just this little gap from now until April pretty much that I'm like, I just need a little bit of extra help from you guys and I'll be all right. So I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna end it there. I think that's that's gonna be the show. Thank you very much for for listening and and watching and supporting what I do. I I would absolutely love if you could jump over to Patreon right now and and uh, and sign up to the yearly option. Um, that would really really help me. It's cheaper for you. You get a, a free poster and a free T-shirt with it. Um, and that doesn't cost me anything extra because they're just sitting in my garage. So I'm happy to just to just do that. I'll get your sizes when you sign up. Uh, and I, I'll sign all of the posters. If you sign up to the, the cheapest version, you'll get one poster and a T-shirt. You sign up to the middle version, you'll get three posters uh, and a T-shirt, and I'll sign all of them and, and send them out to you uh, as, as quickly as I, as I can. Um, and, yeah, maybe a good Christmas present, buy it for somebody else. Uh, it, uh, I think I'll be all right. I just need a little bit of extra help, uh, and I need to hustle. So if you see me selling a bunch of stuff, <laughs> you guys know why, all right? Thank you very much. I hope you guys have a good week and thank you so much for helping me out and supporting uh, what I do. I'm almost through the other end. I just need a little bit of extra help. So I'll talk to you guys next Sunday or right now on Patreon. Have a shit one. Bye.